Let me tell you about my friends over at Citrus America and their amazing juicing equipment. They're revolutionizing the way you enjoy freshly squeezed juice. They're at the best hotels, restaurants, and markets. Their mission is simple. Develop a unique consumer experience with on-premise juicing, deliver healthy taste options to clientele, and juice more faster. It's that easy. Citrus America supplies the highest quality juicing equipment and solutions in the industry. So whether you're a small business owner or a large corporation, Citrus America has the right juicing equipment for you. Find out more at citrusamerica.com. Hello, food fam. This is the Walk and Talk podcast, and I'm your host, Carl Fiadini. Today, we, today's special, we have a Michelin rated chef on the program. That is the chef, Michael Colantes. And we're podcasting on site at the Carroll Hotel in beautiful Clearwater, St. Pete, Florida. If you haven't been to this property yet, get here. It's top notch. With all the amenities you expect from a Tribute Portfolio Hotel, I must tell you that your dining experience with Chef Thomas Parker and company will be top tier. Let's dig in. But first, attention chefs and food buyers. Are you looking to improve your proteins program with quality and service by the best in the beef business? Reach out to Peninsula Food Service. With 25 butchers on staff, their services will dazzle you and impress your dining guests. Peninsula is the largest Creekstone farm distributor in the southeast United States. Let the gang at Peninsula Food Service service cut your beef burdens away. Ask about their dry age program. Look them up at PeninsulaFood.com. Uh... Chef Jeffrey Schlissel, my man. How you doing, bub? How the hell are you? I am fantabulous. All right, forget all that. What have you been cooking? Jump in. <laughs> Tell me slow. I don't what know do you... if I want to say because I got this guy to my left, man. It's like, you know, I don't know if I have quality up to him. It doesn't matter. If you're two inches That's tall, true. you're two inches tall. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> wow, two inches. You know what I'm saying? That's where we're going to go with the program today. Yeah, it's, you already, you yeah, already kind of yeah. started. Well, the, that's why I'm here. From the ground. All right, go. All right, so I just did this tasting with uh, Kona up at the park over in Sebring. They came up, the farmers, uh, Rich and Colleen, and uh, we did a four-course tasting. And we did a elote salad. Which totally different from what you would get in a street corn. So we put it all in a silo with some microgreens. And what was really cool, we used aji verde, which is going to be the sauce I'm coming out with first uh, for the co-packing side of things. The next course was really neat. It's the classic uh, French champagne and col- uh, cantaloupe soup. But we smoked the cantaloupe first. And as everyone was eating it, we put a little plant-based foam on it and it was infused that with champagne and the little pistachio powder on top. And both Rich and Colleen looked over at me and like, how did you get it taste like salmon? And I'm eating it. I'm like, oh, that's that taste I'm tasting. But it was 100% plant-based. There was nothing to it. It was just the cherry wood and the olive oil interacting with the cantaloupe after it was smoked with the salt and a little bit of the vanilla. Everything kind of like went together and really kind of jived together. Then the last core, the entree course was um, grilled ribeye, spinellus, got to have the spinellus, little chimichurri, smoked watermelon and tomato salsa. And then uh, we had some grilled veg to go on that. And then for the dessert, which we did is like a campfire blueberry cobbler. And that was smoked first. Then we took them and compressed the blueberries with bourbon, Meyer lemon zest, and a little bit of vanilla. And then had that compressed for about two days. You son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. And I've got some left over for Veronica, that. and I have some for uh, Paige, and I might have some more for you guys. All right, look, look, here's the deal. Maybe right, Thursday. First of all, first things first, okay? I Where, saw where's the, your tasting? I saw the pictures, okay? And where's my piece? Okay, that's it. All right, all right in my look, belly. look let's, get, let's get Chef Michael. Now, he is from Saseki in Orlando, uh, Michelin rated. Mm. This guy's a bad ass uh, chef. Welcome to the program. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Now, so did, how did you like that description there? That was it was sexy, man. <laughs> right? Was, we got to do that, right? That's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Last thing I'm cooking is uh, <laughs> smash burgers. I'm okay with that, too. <laughs> and what are we talking about here? No, I, I opened the spot near Daytona Beach, and uh, it's so funny how a good burger makes your day in a crappy burger. I mean, I've never had a burger that's unedible, but... 
Just a good smash burger, crispy edges, good amount of salt. Mm. You Big Mac sauce it. We reverse engineered the Big Mac sauce. Oh, you did that? That's, you know, and American cheese. I mean, it's just, uh, we call it slutty food. It's just slutty food. <laughs> just, I, can I, can I, be, you feel dirty, you want to shower afterwards. That's what I'm Can doing I right be now. a whore for you? <laughs> that, that sounds you so are the amazing. No, I mean, like, first of all, look, all right, look so, um, I've been in the food business for about 30 years, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was on the restaurant side for a little bit, but most of my tenure was on the distribution side, also right? Also known as the dark side. Right. <laughs> so, but I've been, uh, you know, so that's the life on the road. You're always driving. Right. So I don't, it's not that I always have time to go to like great places to sit down and enjoy a meal. It's usually drive through. And at the end of the day, you, 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 you begin to have an affinity for some of those fast food sort of places. It just is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. So you're telling me, you reverse engineer, I want to get in on this action. <laughs> Can you do it again? Can you reproduce great. it? It's great, man. Can you do it? You know what the, th- the, the common misconception about Big Mac sauce is there's ketchup in it? Yeah, there's And there's no ketchup. No kidding. Paprika for the no. color, right, Jim? Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of pickles, man. So it's, it's so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And mustard. And most people Can, hate mustard. Let's just let's just pack up and let's go make these things. <laughs> John's ready. We got to do a, a side by side comparison. <laughs> John's. <in. laughs> um, all right. So when someday when we actually uh, when we get out to the restaurant and we do some things together, that will be a segment. There it is. Can we do it? Just a good smash burger. Yeah. Super crispy edges. Not caramelizing your onions ahead of time. That's I. I went back. Right. You know your chefs try to like. Oh, you know it's easier for no. You need that kind of. I'm from Jersey, right? So it's that steamer style. You throw it on raw. It's barely cooked. Some it's burnt. You know, that's that's what it is, you know? I think the problem with burgers, though, is everyone has their own opinion of what a burger is, like, their best. The best burger, right? yeah. So I think, like, you know, for me, I, I've had an in-out burger. Yeah. The only way to have that is, is animal sauce. And Yeah. You know, or animal style. And I used to have an affinity for in-and-out burger, and now I'm like, eh. Right. Eh. You ever have a water burger? Yeah. Oh wow, I love a water burger, man. Yeah. <laughs> Out of Texas, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dirty dirty pleasure is like a luggage full of uh White Castle yeah. and like uh, yeah. Yeah. In a dirty motel by myself. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of Hoboken. Like, I wanna I, I what think I, that I think we should try to, you know, do some AI artwork <laughs> on that on and that, see what yeah. it comes up with. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. <laughs> I'm going to try it. Um, because that sounds amazing. You know yeah. what I mean? It doesn't, you know what? Dark, dingy. Wow. They haven't painted in 25 years. I don't care. Well, I'm here in Tampa and I'm well, asked, and, and we, well, did this, uh, we did welcome. this event. <laughs> we did this event, event with uh, Burns and, and Haven and all that for Burns Fest. I'm asking every server, I was like, where do we go for something dingy? Like, we're, we, all we kept saying is, Where's the dirty water hot dog spot of Tampa? They don't have dirty waters. And, but, like, where's that, that that gnarly taco at 3 in the morning? Like, where is the spot here? And what did they tell you? Nothing. Nothing. Right. Nothing. Right. So, by the way, FYI, everyone out there, dirty waters are the best. It's That's the, the best, way to yeah. do it. Yeah. That's the way to – and, and, and uh, when, you, when you say that here, not many folks understand what that is. No, no, no. They, they think I'm crazy. Yeah. What, well, yeah. dirty water. What's, what's I want, that? I want a dirty water hot dog. Yeah. yeah. Just describe – a dirty water hot dog. Dirty experience. water hot dog is water hot dog cooked in, in water, water that's been pretty much there since six in the morning when the vendors get out there, and all of that consomme. <laughs> that's a that really nice way to consomme toxic, of toxic waste <laughs> tube of emulsified pork. It's just delicious. It is fantastic. And no ketchup. I you know nope, I, I nope, can go no uh, I can you know there's fired, there's a we fired chef for, for having ketchup there's a that. debate to be had there because I can go I can do so for me I can do no ketchup I can do ketchup I can do ketchup mustard that's it I don't want anything else I don't want relish where I don't want at? anything else where you at with that chef attention chefs and food buyers. Are you looking to improve your proteins program with quality and service by the best in the beef business? Reach out to Peninsula Food Service. With 25 butchers on staff, their services will dazzle you and impress your dining guests. 
Peninsula is the largest Creekstone farm distributor in the Southeast United States. Let the gang at Peninsula Food Service cut your beef burdens away and ask about their dry-aged program. Look them up at PeninsulaFood.com. And, you know, you guys are talking about dirty water hot dogs. I was out in Vegas last year, and there's a place called Hot Dog. It's H-A-U-T-E. Uh-huh. There's seven hot dogs on this thing, and I'm like, I got to open this thing because there, there were so many different flavor profiles on each one. We landed on, I think, Saturday. I think Sunday I didn't know about it. Keith and, and Matt Jackson were like, oh, my God, you got to try this out. I was there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It was what, that was, good. what were the hot dogs? What was it about? It, it, just everything. The way they toasted the bun a little bit, the way they they, they – pan for our griddle the burnt the hot dog so it got charred on the outside a little bit and they steamed it as well and then the toppings that's what really made it they had like a green sauce with fried onions and an arugula so it wasn't just a hot dog they kicked it up a notch and they i mean literally i had one hot dog i remember everybody back in the kitchens i was like i don't mind spending this much it was like 80 bucks and i don't remember how many people we fed but they were like this where is this i'm like Got to go across the street for hot dogs. For a hot dog, yeah. I'm a hot dog purist. Okay, so I don't. I I'll do with zero, yeah. but I do. I do like the ketchup, man. I mean, right, you got to have exactly. the freaking ketchup. So, what do you like about your hot dog? Is it snap? Is it the snap. crunch? Is it the meat? What is the profile you guys snap. look for? Yeah, I like the snap. I like the snap, the purity of it. I, and I like Potato a little buns. bit of that. I like I like a soggy bun. I I was just gonna say I like a little bit of that uh, dirty water, yeah, yeah. that that oily water yeah. in that in that bun. Absolutely. Consum- Excuse me, consomme, consomme, <laughs> consomme for sure, for sure. <laughs> and oh, I can get down with that. Chef is I, of course, of course. You know, and I love it when the uh, and I love it when the uh, the vendor is cleaning up behind you. It makes it really high high level. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Give the best experience possible. You buy the hot dog. The pinches are swarming around you. I mean, that's just part of the experience. You know. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, how the hell are you feeling about this whole Florida Michelin? You're one of them. Like that's that's amazing. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's incredible. I, I I work for a lot of chefs who won Michelin stars and um, you know chased it for a while as an angry young twenties chef, and to do it now in my late forty or in late thirties, excuse me, late thirties with uh, with the team and in a way that we think is sustainable and did it in the way that, you know, just the way that we want to do it. I mean, who would ever think in Orlando or Florida they would show up? And, um, you know, it came to a point where, right, we opened a year before Michelin, you know, and uh, we stayed the course. It was during COVID. You, we didn't know what what we were doing. Can I just be really real? We didn't know what we just opened a 10 seat restaurant and said, okay, this is what we're going to cook. And we changed the menu every 30 days and we just did our thing. And sometimes we'd be full to the, to the brim in the beginning. And then uh, before, literally before Michelin, there are, there are weeks we were getting into summer and there are weeks where maybe two, four guests for the whole night, like scary stuff. And I turned to my wife, I'm like, I don't know what we're going to do, you know? And Michelin comes, changes everything we've been fully booked uh since june of last year is it like that incredible. is it like that like you get you, you kind of get the you, you, you know you get knighted right? right and then everybody just shows up you're part of a, a group of less than 300 restaurants in the country um of uh guidebook that's been here for over over a century so when when that gets announced and it goes out yeah how many how many of your celebrity chefs or, or that tier of chef, your Michelin rated, uh, your beer, all these, all these high end cats, how many of them actually come to the restaurant or how many reach out? Is there, is there like back, <laughs> is there back chatter? None. No, I'd say, yeah. I'd say a- afterwards you meet a lot of people. Like I met a lot of people at the event, people I'd never, you know, brush shoulders with guys who've won Michelin for many years and now they've. You know, and you're in this little fraternity brotherhood of uh, of chefs. That's everyone says, ah, Michelin doesn't matter. Well, Michelin doesn't matter until you've won it, and you can say it doesn't matter. And, and like for me, it matters. It changed the whole trajectory of our restaurant, of our company, of our chefs. How we're, you know, it, it's not the end all be all, but you're silly to think it doesn't affect your business in some way. A lot of people did the, you know, 
all right, we got the mission. We're full to books. Let's open the floodgates. Let's, you know, quality goes down. You start doing double the numbers or whatever. We just said, well, we couldn't. We had 10 seats. <laughs> you know, it's like, so the, the, the so, but you could. You could close that and look for another spot and open something booger, we, bigger uh, if you yeah, wanted. We but you don't want to. actually close the next day for the betterment of the team and to provide a better service. We close the next day. You heard that, right? Yeah, no, I think that's great. So that's actually taking into account the actual team, which is what they need to do. And plus, that you actually save labor, too. Well, I mean, it's stupid to think that... Uh, Michelin, you win a Michelin star and it's one chef on the stage. There's so many hands. There's so many farmers, vendors. Um, there's so many people involved and I, and, and I celebrate that with the team. We sn- actually that night, we snuck the whole team into the actual event. We closed the restaurant. One, I closed the restaurant. I said, all right, we're doing Michelin. You guys go to the bar at the hotel. Either we're going to be drinking because we're sad or we're happy. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, we're drinking. <laughs> And so I shut, the, I shut the restaurant down because we were fully packed with two people and uh, yeah, two guests for the whole night. And so I said, okay, let's just do it. And then I just snuck them into, I was like, Hey, let's get everybody in here. And, and I got to, when they announced it, it's all of us together getting the celebration. That's awesome. that, that, it, it, the guys have been with me from the beginning. It's amazing. Yeah, no, that's, that's admirable, man. And, and the reality is it, same with like what we're doing here I, Without the team, there's no, there's no show. There's no it show. just doesn't happen. Yeah. You know? Um, so you, you mentioned something a, min- a moment ago about how some of the older um, or, you know, Michelin chefs who've been around a little while, uh, did they have you like try to chop flour or go empty the hot water from the coffee? Uh, <laughs> no, the coffee no I've never, I've never had that, you know, no. the, the great, a really, see, this is the yeah. things that should happen. I feel like there should be some more camaraderie and I think, you know what I mean? I, I think the problem It'd is be cooler. That, yeah, yeah. But I think that there's a lot of ego and, and nepotism within the actual community and the industry itself. And a lot of times where chefs see another chef achieving something, they get jealous where it shouldn't be that way. I mean, listen, I, 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 anybody that gets a Michelin or any award, I think, or reward from anything, I think they should be congratulated for. And and it's, it's it's a huge opportunity. It's a huge opportunity. It's a huge blessing, but it's also, they don't see the struggle in in anything, right? We don't see what it took to the road to get to where they're at. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. You know, it's funny. So uh, no one wants to walk those shoes, man. No, of course not. I don't want to do it. It's funny before you came and we were in the green room, we're talking to chef Parker from here, Thomas and I, and I said, I never really wanted to go for a beard. I've always wanted to go for, I mean, uh, sorry, I never wanted to go for a Michelin. I always wanted to go for a beard. And he's like, yeah, I just, you know, I was the same way with beard. And then we started talking about it. I'm like, listen, if I can get it just a, uh, hey, you did a great job kind of thing. I'm okay with that. Right. Because right. that's what we're, and inevitably that's what we're doing. We're not reinventing the wheel. We're not reinventing anything. No, but, to be, to, but to be shown for your craftsmanship by like the Michelin star, that's, that's a huge honor. Oh, 100%. I mean, that to me, that's the top of, of... That's the Oscar. That's the top of what we're what we're doing as chefs day in, day out. And you see a lot of... I've seen a lot of my friends achieve it. I've uh, been a part of teams that's uh, won it or, or sustaining it. Um, and it's it's just... It's a different breed. You're, you're really that 10, 20% of... Like I said, 300 restaurants in America. Let, maybe, yeah, 300 restaurants in America that have a mission star. And... You're all you're in a room with a bunch of guys, bunch of gals who are trying to achieve the same thing with the same standard, the same level of passion. It's it's an, I, I think any young chef needs to go go stage at a place like this. See the difference. See what you know. And, and there's nothing knocking. You know, I, I have I have fast casual restaurants. I, I opened a, a little, you know, burger, fried chicken joint on the beach, you know, stuff like that. But to experience it, to see what it takes at that level, to see how I, you know, my first day at, uh, at Masa when I was supposed to be the chef of the place, cut four quarts of scallions, the Japanese way, took it all and said, you know what? This is great family meal. <laughs> After two hours, my hands about to fall off. And you know, it's just the high, the level of expectation is, so, you know, the stress level is high. Well, you're talking about Masa in Japan, which is just a whole nother level of how they go about the philosophy of cooking. And it's, it's more religion and more breathing, like the steps of martial arts, like they walk, you have to go through them. You've, you've, I've heard that from chefs that study different cuisines. You know, when I was working for a very famous chef, and I think you and I both worked for him, I read your um, bio, 
when we did sushi, Tonka, his sushi chef who was training me, was like, this is the way you got to do it. And if I didn't, if I washed the rice wrong, I started over again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there was the whole thing. And I'm like, all right, all I'm doing is washing, flipping oh. water here. The I simplest, mean, rice. The right. simple things now, after years of cooking, are mm-hmm. the hardest to, uh, it's just so much harder to, to execute. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's, I think it's also like, what would you tell, like, did you come out and go, I'm going to go for a Michelin? How did, how did you go about wanting and then obtaining this one? I thought, uh, you know, early in my 20s, I was chasing it. And then you just start cooking. You start you know, living your life. You know, you get married. You have kids. We opened this 10-seat restaurant. Just uh, I did fast casual during COVID. I had no business doing fast casual. <laughs> <laughs> it is so hard. It is so, and I commend anyone in that industry. And As somebody in the corner is now rolling their eyes and shaking their head Right, up and right. Down. My wife is definitely like, yeah, that's we'll never do it again. It, mm-hmm. it was so difficult. And, and it's, you know, the skill set and being a, you know, you're wearing so many hats. You're, you're the, the, you know, trying to do the taxes and all that, all that stuff, man. And then we opened this 10 seat restaurant and I was feeling the groove, getting in the groove of what we want to do. And we didn't really know, you know, we months later, Michelin announces and, and we come to find out because we changed our menu every 30 days that first year. 18, 22 courses every 30 days. Haven't repeated since two years. 400 dishes within the team created. And that for, that um, we are literally, we ch- when they announced, they said a specific dish, so we knew. They announced it. They were with us two months prior, you know, vetting us. And that's what I like about Michelin. You just have to be on your game every time. So you wouldn't know, no, you no, would have no idea. The inspectors don't say anything. It's not a voting, it's not a popularity contest, it's nothing. It's, and, and uh, I have it under you know high regard that um, from other Michelin star chefs, cool, you have, you have Picasso's up there, you have the most expensive glassware, amazing. Who cares? It's about the food, regardless. Price dictates the experience, or the experience dictates the price, but Michelin, only gives a rib about what's on the plate. And, and it's funny you say that because if you watch uh, J5 out of Thailand, who makes that crab omelet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she's, a mich- she's a street, literally a street vendor. She's 80-something years old, and that's all she does is cook this amazing, it's like this big, and it's crab so, omelet. So how, I see you got the goosebumps there. Yeah. <laughs> how, how is it that, um, how do they come up with finding, is it just like randomly going out to eat, or they're on social media? I mean, they're following trends. Like, how, how, where do they, how are they coming up with? Uh, I, I mean, I, I think it's, yeah, being a top-tier restaurants in, in the town or, or buzz, and I'm sure they're doing, they've got, teams you know this is a hundred and five whatever year old company that's been doing this or putting out guides they've got people that are you know doing the research and inspecting and the funny thing i got 10 seats the first year i rem- i almost remember every single guest came through the door i know their preferences i know what they want i have no idea i have no idea how do you where do you go from here though like what's so if, hey you you know you, you've uh you got the rating. You're um, in there. Now what? It's like kids, right? Or, or you're getting married. It's like, hey, when's the second? Hey, when? Right. Oh, you got when? You, when's the marriage? You know, it's like, oh, when's the third? You know, it's always that. I had to talk my wife into the second one. <laughs> really? Way. Yeah. 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 She says she's and, and real side note. She's like, um, she's okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said okay. And then like a week later, she's like, no, no, we're not going to do it. I said, whoa, whoa, slow, slow your roll here. You said we were. She goes, you got thirty days. And I'm like, all right, that's challenge accepted. <laughs> You know, and, and, and uh, number two, we have number two. So we're Greg gonna, Luganis yeah. came to town. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. No. So no. anyway, what do you so what do? You do? We are just enjoying whatever fruits come from that at this point. Um, you know, it's opened a lot of doors. A lot of chefs at this point now have reached out. Um, guys like Rod Rettino, who I, I think will be one of the young, I, I hope, He's an amazing chef. He's from Orlando. And Ryan, uh, if you don't know, owns John and Bresca. They got two Michelin in uh, under a year. And uh, I think he's going to be the youngest three Michelin star chef in the world. He has oh, wow. two more years to pull it off. We're rooting for you, man. Orlando. We want you to have it. Orlando. He's in D.C. In DC. He's from Orlando. And uh, how amazing would that be for, for this generation and to be for stateside chef? Uh, but, um, 
you know, it's just opened a lot of doors for different collaborations and, and, and being on the bigger stage. We have a way bigger international audience that would never, I mean, we're in, like I always say, man, we're in Orlando. We're not at a resort. We're not, we're not funded by Disney. We're, we're, we're in like a pretty shitty building. <laughs> You know, I, for a lack of a better term, it's pretty shitty. We you know? go for accuracy. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold back. Yeah. Well, tell us how you feel about the whole, you know. We've got to talk to the landlord now, right? We, I, mean, I mean, the way we did this restaurant, my wife and I, I mean, we, we started with garage floor painted floors, like paint the floors. No decor, nothing. We just, like I said, we had no idea what the hell we were doing. We just opened in 867 square feet. Wow. Our kitchen was 230 square feet. I don't know if you... And the, I mean, we have the sushi bar where we do all of the prep. <coughs> but yeah, that's it, man. 200 square feet. That's, yeah, that's being a, young and dumb and stupid and, like and just ambitious, I mean, well, you, uh, you don't helps need, a lot. You don't really need... And that's like a lot of times where restaurant tours go a little bit nutty. They end up spending so much money in the front end to you know make it where they can get to something, and you really don't need that much to achieve a Michelin or a James. What you, well, what are you trying to achieve? Most right. most restaurant tours are here to make money. I, I you know you don't you don't open a ten seat restaurant to make no. money. No, no, no. no. That's what I love of the Michelin. food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing of it is, is that you don't have a menu that's uh, cheese the size of a cheesesteak, right? Or right, cheese right. Fix, cheese. Cake uh, factory, factory yeah. so it's you can minimize the the amount of waste. You can really hone in the this skill. model works, right. right? You have five people, six people, passionate, dedicated to the craft, but everyone has to show up every day. You know, when someone calls out, it's like you're in charge of a high, of, everyone. Just, so it's really this balancing act of like, you know, high wire, you know, act because it's like. All right, you do all of the sushi program. No one else could do that program. Or you do the beverage program. Who's going to take it? And there have been instances where we're like, oh man, what are we going to do? You know, it's it's tough, but also it's very manageable. Yeah. Are you still changing the menu every thirty days? More. Uh, we change the menu really often. Um, every couple of weeks now, but we've allowed ourselves to have things to evolve and that was something i had to tell the guys is like we gotta stop and this is amazing we gotta stop things need to evolve to version two version three that gets better so we've had one of our longest ones was um almost six months and it was uh lit as simple as it could be it's a uh, blue uh dry aged bluefin tuna we just mince up shallots smoked soy sauce chives creme fresh cab a uh, Fat layer caviar. Because I when, when we came up with this, I was like, sometimes you get caviar to place, and it's like a little like, here you go. We wanted people to feel, and it's in the caviar tin, so you feel like you're getting hooked up. So, man, I want, I want people to feel like, wow, they're getting 15 grams of caviar. They're getting hooked up on caviar. You know, 15 grams of caviar, $85 a, a, an ounce. So that's, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. You, you know how many grams are an ounce, right? <laughs> So back back 20. when I was younger, no. So <laughs> that's why I said that. <laughs> on your on your um, uh, when you're talking about coming up with new menu items, right? You're coming up with a new dish or whatever. Is it, are you allowing the the team to kind of get in on that, or is it like you dart it out and let oh, them? No. If, if it was all my menu, it'd be a pretty shitty menu. <laughs> okay, <laughs> heard. It, it really comes from like I'll tell you the process. So there's we work. We started out with seven farms locally, just going to every farmer's market four days a week. One of, one of the team members would go, and then we get the list, and then we make the list. Now we're at about uh, 44 farms within a 100-mile radius. Within rotation, we get the list. We have a, a garden. We started doing pop-ups before we opened. It's a, it's a not, it's an educational nonprofit garden uh, two miles down the street. And we get to just use what, because we're only 10 seats, we get to use whatever we want from there. And that's how we make the, we make, you know, we get the list, we come up with a cool concept and then. Is it, so it's like group think? Oh, oh, a hundred percent. It's, we spend a lot of time with each other. We have bunk beds in the back. We just all kind of like, like seven dwarf it. I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Good. Are you, uh, are you Snow White or is it, who's? I'm dopey. <laughs> dopey. <laughs> okay. Heard. Got it. Got it. Um, so, I mean, right away as we're talking and, um, you know, you, uh, we've kind of maybe touched on this before, 
but I want to bring, I want to bring in our restaurant recipes crew into the restaurant and film some of this stuff because I think it would be just, just beautiful. Oh, be great! Yeah, I just want to be there because I'm not really part of that, so I'm okay. Well, you, you could you. We, we were just at Slate last week. You, you I, couldn't cut you. It, listen, you you were invited. <laughs> I know, I know. I was I was too busy doing a tasting. Well, I can't. You know, it's delicious. <laughs> I saw the pictures. I saw the picture, but you know, you could have brought. I, I could have, but we're here at the hotel. So, if we're at John's house, I would have brought food. See, coming from like regular restaurants, and now you're doing tastings. You're doing private events. How it's, much more? I mean, what? I it, mean, it's a lot more fun because you you know exactly what you're up against. You know how many people up yep. for. Yep, caterers have it. I mean, I'm not saying they have it easy, but they have it a little bit better because they know exactly. The menu, how much oh, food? It's tough. I just did our first catering after two years open. Just some, you know, a, a good a customer of ours, a guest of ours wanted us to do a private event at their house. And I mean, prep from early morning till night. I mean, the boys are already out of the restaurant. I'm showing up at 1 a.m. trying to unpack everything. I mean, it's a one day hustle, but it's it's good. Mm hmm. It's good money. Yeah, yeah but yeah. it's it's a lot of... Well, plus when you go off, there's so many other ancillary items. Like when we we're on site, it's like just now setting up, we needed a, an Allen or a... Um, Allen key. Yeah, Allen key. We didn't have one. Yeah. So we had a MacGyver, which thank God we have John MacGyver over there. Mm -hmm. So we were able to fix it. 100%. Then, you always you always forget. Oh, you definitely something. forget something. I don't care Everything. who you are. So does everybody know that you have a podcast too? Oh, yeah. I have a podcast. <laughs> so I make, I make awesome food plus... Plus, we do a podcast in like the stew room of the back of our restaurant. Like literally in the in the back of our restaurant, we have cameras and microphones, and we just and we that's just how do you it. met. Yeah. So the Dan family, he came over and he was geeking out on all the stuff. I remember yeah. seeing him. Me and my 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 media guy. So I also own a media company that does uh, digital media and content creation. And, um, just fun stuff. I love. It's a medium for me to to explore and have fun, and I. I like building businesses, I guess, or like being part of something interesting. And, and my guy, Fernando, is super talented, but also super just like he, he just loves this stuff, you know. And so when you like get excited off someone else's like passions and where they're at in life, it's like, oh, I just want to be. Oh, that's who I want to be around. Surround myself with guys who are just super passionate about whatever they're doing. I try to explain to people that I am a mirror of whomever I'm with. Yeah, I'm the good. because. At the end of it, if if everybody's humdrum and down, and you know that I'm my, I have zero creativity. Yeah. But if everybody's up and like, hey man, yeah, it's you know <laughs> it it's it's you yeah. you can you can achieve and do so much more. Just watch how much caffeine you give one of your people, though. Uh, yeah. Remember Nafim? Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask me. If, yeah, no, how, I, many, how many eight balls did I I'm do? I'm pretty sure you have a drug habit. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty, pretty sure. Uh, we, no, it's called it's coffee. Thing. It's coffee. I know. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing we don't uh, we don't test, right? You don't. <laughs> well, no, I'd fail for weed. I, I'll be honest with that one. <laughs> That's Wait, why he's dopey. You are. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're a chef, right? I mean, okay. <laughs> um, part of the it's part of the wheels on the bus go round and round. How often are you? Uh, how often are you putting uh, episodes together? Uh, we're putting, um, we're doing once a week uh, episodes. Jesus. We just get people in and out of. Where do you find the time to do that? Well, that's what I was just about to ask. I'll, so I'll, I'll, grab, I'll grab a guest and be like, hey, come back here. Do, do you spend time with your wife? Is that why she's here? Yeah, she's. she's <laughs> this is the only Sorry, way you guys see each other. She's my handler. <laughs> you know, like she. <laughs> I have a little buzz collar underneath here. Oh, like, that is terrible. I see her pushing the button. I don't know what's going on there. It's, it's, Give me a oh. little jolt every time. No, because it's like this. It's like, you know, it's like here. Oh, here, excuse me. Look at me. I have a Michelin restaurant plus a podcast. I do it once a week. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, that's awesome. Well, no, not only but, that, he's got another one where he's making smash burgers over in Daytona. He's over at Burns doing the Burns thing. Yeah, and he's so chill. You know what's, going on? what's really amazing about this? This whole thing is that he's so chill. Yeah. If I were doing your life, I, I would be wigged out of my mind. <laughs> but then I would probably have to hang out with you after hours. <laughs> it line you right up. It, it, it's, yeah, it it's lines you right up. That's yeah. called you know truth. what? Yeah, I hate to say that that old uh, act, well, what they say like um, if you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life kind of thing. I'm finding though now, uh, the most expensive we have in life is time. 
yes. and what I spend my time with. My t- and I'm not afraid to tell people now. I do consulting on top of all this. I travel to New York and Miami for different clients and stuff. I'm like, my time's expensive because it takes away from my kids. Uh, well, what I, I don't even t- like what what justifies your price range? I was like, it's just me. what it is. What it is. Yeah, it's you me. want me, and, and and it takes away time from my kids. It takes away from my family. Like. This is what it is. How long and have you been cooking? Have How long have you been in the kitchen? 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. So 20 years of that experience that somebody wants to get the better price right. for all of the experience and all of, all of the knowledge. And they want to take your knowledge and your experience right. and they want to apply it to what they're doing. And yet they don't have the they don't understand the value proposition that you actually offer. You're forgetting one thing. That's what he's going to do right then and there. What you're forgetting is that restaurant tour is going to benefit from him and his experiences tenfold down the years if they keep on doing exactly what he told. Well, uh, so they make the money back tenfold. I'll it's tell you this about consulting, time. which sucks, you know, uh, for any chef that wants to get in consulting. I, I'm going to give some advice. Make your money in the front end. Y- you're a sponge that's going to get run out. And the, usually the flow of water happens really quickly in the beginning. And then you start drying off because you've given everything you've got to the consulting side. And guess what? After that, well, why do we really need to pay this guy this mm-hmm. much? And I'm telling you that from experience, anyone who wants to get in the industry in this. But also these young chefs, listen, you look at me and you think, man, this guy, I can, I put the time. Okay, I got, I got yanked by the <laughs> chef caller. You know, I, you know, I put the time in, you know. I did the dirty job for a long time. I still do the dirty job. I still, you know, throw out the trash and mop the floors. And but they're not yanking the. They're, they're, it's not as aggressive. No. as it used to be. Well, I'm, and I, I appreciate other. that because I was a hothead, and I'm, I'm on. I'm on. I'll be on this new show with Morimoto coming out, and uh, a little bit of that came out there. <laughs> a, little, a little bit of the hotheadness came out there. I, I'm not. I'm not against. Scene. I'm not against. Having your emotions show when you're in that sort of, a, I mean, throwing a pan at somebody or, you know, I, I, That's you, you can, yeah, sure. And you can, you can cross the line. There's a boundary there, but I feel like, I feel like it might be too toned down nowadays. I feel like it should still be aggressive, a little, little hot in there. It's, it's a different. Uh, Doesn't that make it fun? Well, here's the, uh, you know, when I was at Ruby Shonda, it was like, it's 25 of us. That's all for the same goal of winning Michelin. Now you go to most restaurants and you've got the one or two guys that you're really going to push forward. And the rest are, you know, mouth breeders like me, just, you know, like me, <laughs> Dark Vader. Me, me bodies. But, you know, but you find those one or two people are still super passionate about the business. But, you know, I just did that event with all these chefs yesterday. And it's the same thing across the board. It's just it's it's different now. The, there's no I don't know. Was there a superstarness when you were getting it like, wow, I want to be the next Bobby Ford? <laughs> Yeah, since because I'm so old, um, the guy who really did it for me, and I remember, you know, watching him was Emeril Lagasse. Oh yeah. So I mean, when I was a kid, it was Julia Childs, and it was Graham Cure and and uh, Jacques Pepin. When yeah, growing up, Lagasse really like came like the rock star. Oh yeah. god, yeah. I mean, he was Mixed the one that really. Set, yeah. yeah. I guys, mean, yeah. those guys really set the bar for what we have today. Right. Um. You know, do I? appreciate when somebody goes through those things. Yeah. I mean, to have the time to go do, you know, top chef or chopped or any of those, do I agree that sometimes you, those people go out and get a job and run a restaurant? No, because they might be the best cook, but they don't have the business side of it. Oh yeah. yeah, So it's, it's twofold. And to your thing about, you know, consulting, I did that for about almost nine years for a major company. So nobody had to pay me. And uh, these guys were using some of the stuff I was coming up with. And I'm like, wait a minute. These are some of my recipes. These are. So I thought to myself, like, if I can do this and they're making money, why can't I do it and make it the money myself? Right. right. So that's one of the reasons why when I stepped away from the, the dark side, I went and started doing consulting as well. And I think right out of culinary school back then, all I thought was, uh, you're just going to be a restaurant chef. I okay, wait a minute. Know what what culinary school? Things. Valencia in Orlando, just a community college. Yeah. All right. So here's a big question for you guys. Is culinary school relevant? Is that, you know, I feel school and I was having this discussion with my wife coming over here. I said, school teaches people that it teaches employers that you're committed for four years to something. And then what they can already teach you 
but it just shows commitment, so then they grab you. I'm, Do you think culinary schools? Really I'm gonna do? whatever she said is what I'm gonna side with. <laughs> no, so here's I'm kidding. No, but it's the truth. No, so here's here's how, tell me if I'm wrong, Jeff. Mm-hmm. Here's how I look at it. I've hired and fired lots of folks. Okay, right. some of them some of them were were collegiate. Some doesn't pay. Right. I'm not talking about here and now. <laughs> this is like in my in my, in my in my professional life. Not not. So uh, you know you hire and fire. You do your thing. And some of these, some of the people that you're bringing on board, you know, um, degrees, the whole nine yards, right. but but they don't have they don't have the experience. Number one, and therefore their attitudes aren't exactly, you know, uh, they don't mesh well with what you're trying to achieve in a lot of cases. But then you have somebody that's been in the business for five years. They're learning. They they've been through some. They've been through some some. Um, um, Hard trenches. Shit. Yeah, seasoning. yeah. They went through seasoning. Yeah. That's good. And all of a sudden. They don't have a they don't have a, a degree to show me, but they do have experience and they know and they know how to treat them. They know how to act. Right. Right. And therefore they can perform and execute. I'll take that over a, pa- a piece of paper any day. Mm-hmm. I mean, granted, we're not talking about, um, you know, uh, architecture and we're not talking about like brain surgery. Right, you know, right. we're, 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 that's not what this is. I mean, I don't mind brain surgery being on the job training. I mean, you just kind of <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it, there should be it out some you go. Sort of, yeah, there should be some sort of. You know, like a uh, YouTube class, yeah. master class. Sh- probably something, something right? right? Yeah. yeah. 50, 60 bucks, you can take it. Oh, I mean, okay. I'll, I'll add to that, too. I, well, culinary school for me, I had already been in the business by that time, I think it was almost 14 years. So, oh, that's, that's an interesting perspective. There. So when I went to school, JW in North Miami, which was general, the North Miami General Hospital. I was the first graduate born there, believe it or not. And um, I just remember saying, like, we did classes where they would, well, you're going to be the chef and you're going to be the guy or the owner and you're going to be the chef and you're going to sit down and interview for the executive chef position. I'm like, I wouldn't hire any of these people <laughs> because they're, they're that green. My, my, what it did for me was it gave me classic training. Yeah. And that's it. Now, we were just talking in the green room before you got to the the green room and i said you know what they should do in culinary schools is teach basic hasep which is the hvac rather ba- basic ha- um hvac basic plumbing basic like engineering so you can do things without calling like if your coffee maker goes out how to like make sure that goes back up and That's running interesting. thermal coupler that goes out or your thermostat goes out in your oven it's not something i'm going to be working on and i don't know how to do but my god they charge you for time to come when you call and again you're like what's this 50 dollars thing oh that's my time to drive think about how much oh, money because yeah. we're not making as much that's i think where or even like we were talking about the cia culinary institute of america they teach culinary french so you can if you mm-hmm. want to do an externship you can go to france and actually have a conversation right that to me is more valuable than the actual schooling itself. Right, right. I think school of hard knocks is when you really start to learn it. Yeah, but it's also how many guys are really doing classic French, classic techniques now. It's old guard. And you're teaching a style of how to run a restaurant or a kitchen that now it's just so global. I mean, like, listen, sushi chefs, to be honest, off the cuff, can we make more money off the bat and bet you know and it's a little bit more comfortable and all these things then and you can learn it in less time for american style sushi or the basic skill sets right and and compared to being a kitchen you know it's 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 a tough one and then you're leaving sixty thousand dollars in the hole Mm -hmm. for an education that you're gonna go get paid twenty dollars an hour in new york yeah think about it it's tough yeah I mean, I spent maybe twenty thousand on my education at, at Valencia. And look Very at you—you you got, you got a Michelin. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, you can you can reverse engineer your your path, <laughs> and it works. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't it, want to relive that. <laughs> <laughs> nobody does. No nobody does. does. Yeah. Nobody nobody does. Yeah, no, yeah. So, all right. Um, where? What's your podcast? Uh, Eighty six a podcast. Eighty six a podcast. Yeah. 86 of podcast. YouTube, Spotify, the whole thing. Okay. Well, and you can go to your Instagram too. You can follow you on your yep, Instagram. Absolutely. Is it on your website as well? Sure. What's I your website? So. Uh, MikeColantis.com. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm looking, at your, ha- I'm looking at your handler. Yeah, she's she's uh, giving a thumbs up. Yeah, she's, yeah. she's giving it. MikeColantis.com. Yeah. She does look upset that you didn't know <laughs> right away. 
All right. I'm just putting it out there. I'm just putting it out there. He, he yeah. did go and do a v- event last night. So let's make sure. Yeah. You that's know why what chef events are? They are, um, they're a marathon in, uh, in, uh, after stamina. hours booze. Stamina. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I'm, after I'm, hours booze. I'm yeah. surprised he's actually here. <laughs> Me too. Me too. True story. And earlier and so too, because you're like, Hey, can we do it like two? And I'm like, all right. But then he turned around like, Hey, how about 10? Like, okay. Yeah. I definitely underestimated that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Good times. Yeah, no, it's hey, listen, this is like the judgment free zone. It's cool. Yeah. It's like Planet Fitness. Yeah. <laughs> Something like, or I don't know, the, clunky, the opposite of Planet yeah, Fitness, really. Right. Planet Fitness is a judgment free zone. Yeah, but, That's but the whole we thing. gain weight here. Yeah. We yeah. gain weight. Yeah. We don't, Some of us. This is not. <laughs> That's my fault when I do bring food. Yeah, well. Just, <laughs> I'm very surprised. I met you guys. All this guy kept talking about was barbecue. How good barbecue <laughs> is. I show up in your You're city. That got no barbecue. He's got no, no barbecue. barbecue. No. Got no barbecue. Uh, Listen, we're going to throw imagine, it down at the house. We're going to do some stuff, too. Imagine I mean, how I feel about this. Right? <laughs> imagine. If, you know, if I had a good meat vendor and I can get some really good meat, quality meat. There it is. You son of a... <laughs> <laughs> I'll just food throw serve. it that way. <laughs> Peninsula Food Service in the house. I'm just saying. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, we, you know, we can, we can. Yeah, next time we do, I'll give you, I'll give you a shout out. You That'll guys, you and the, and the wife and the, and the kids can come we'll jam. over. We'll jam, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. you know, what we should do is we should pra- grab some product and go to the restaurant and have a good time. How about that? Yeah, we'll, have um, do it on, we'll have to do it on like a Monday or something when the boys aren't there, but that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, I mean, well, we're not going to crash. Let's, let no, just little service. Little, we're not going to yeah, crash your service, little service. Bro. Not a big deal. <laughs> and if we do, we're bringing cameras and everything and we're yeah, going to make it epic. <laughs> okay. It's going to be like an epic hit the wall. It's going to be fun. That would be cool to do a, um, an event with you guys podcast while they're serving food. We could do that. We yeah. actually have the technology. Yeah, we can do that. No, no, no the kidding. Science is he available. actually got has a Wi-Fi cameras, so you we can have actually Wi-Fi. We can just run it. Well, I don't know. I mean, we could literally do it. No, I have, I have wireless feet. feet. No, dude, well, wireless feet. I have yeah. wireless feet, dude. We go anywhere we want. I don't know what even that means, but cool. It's, There's yeah. no cables, and they hook up and they transmit just like you would be on oh, a TV cool. show. Let's yeah. do it like a newscast, and the guys sitting there filming right in front of you. That'd be fun. Yeah, uh, chef, it's kind of a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, your setup's fantastic. I have a uh, 98 camcorder that we're doing a podcast with. But you know what? But it gives it's a character. Now. Flip phone. It's in now, so it's like... It, it, but it gives uh, that character. Like, uh, we, Why like, is it yeah. so grainy? Oh, that's a 98, 98 camcorder. 98 it works. Camcorder, it, yeah. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's great. You know, it's like, stamp and everything. Yeah, Why yeah. is it flash? The, the battery lasts three minutes. You can't, oh, it's, pre, and it's, pre, it's pre-Y2K, it's pre right? So it doesn't actually... Yeah. It's stuck on 1999 flashing. I still, I still it's, have it with the little flip out. Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, right. dear Lord. Wow. Yeah. All right. Chef, here's... You know, so uh, as, we, as we exit okay. today, um, as we exit... Go ahead and plug everything you're doing in your life. Do we have right enough now. time? I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> I'm tired listening to him. MikeColantis.com, 86 a podcast. So Seki, our first one Michelin star restaurant in Orlando, Florida. Ten seats. We'd love to have you there. I'm missing a bunch of stuff, but uh, hopefully oh, you guys will have right me again. Smash Burger. Yeah. You got she's, Smash Burger, the I restaurant got, over uh, in the Riverside t- Johnny's, a little uh, Daytona by the water, fun spot to go to. You got to thank wifey. Oh, and, and my wife. Oh, Absolutely. my gosh. No, the handler. All um, right. <laughs> Listen, I want to thank everybody for coming today. Chef, Chef, John, Jill, the whole nine yards. I don't know where Veronica went, but she she's probably had a split. in the uh, green um, room. Uh, go check, check Chef Michael out at Saseki in Orlando. You won't be disappointed. We are out.